If a giant storm was approaching, what would you do? Would you go and watch Netflix? Would you sit and hide? Or would you prepare? The information I'm about to bring you today is critical to understand. Okay, you need to know this for yourself. The way that you're investing, the way that you have done everything in the past is going to be very different in this year. This is 2023. It's not 22, it's not 21, and nothing behind it. We can use those historical examples to help us, but we must know what's happening in detail. The very first thing is we're going to look at 2023 and the position that people are in, regular everyday people, what's happening. The second thing is the inflationary forces that have been pushing us into this moment and what that means for you. The third is China's economy. We're going to look at that because this is where investors are paying close attention. Do not miss the information in this video. Let's begin. 2022 was wild. Look at this. Warren Buffett surpassed Jeff Bezos in wealth and threatens to oust Bill Gates as the second richest American after Elon Musk. What was interesting during this period was that he was being made fun of. You look at him, Warren Buffett, he's old. He doesn't know what he's doing. He isn't into tech. He should have bought into Tesla. He should have bought into Zoom. He should have purchased Peloton stock. He could have gotten it all, but he's too old. He's washed up. And now what's going on? You see, it's not this quick and fast. It's slow and steady wins the race. And he has been doing a good job over the many decades prior to when you know a lot of people weren't even born yet. And the point is, is that you can't get caught up in a fad. You can't do that. He has his own way of looking at things. I'm not necessarily saying that he, you know, just copy his investments and you're going to do fine. And that's the only thing. No, you got to look at this a little bit more carefully. Look at the position that people are in. Look, this is real average weekly earnings going all the way back from 2007 to the present, we haven't seen anything like this before, 19 months in a row where people were in this position that they haven't been. They have not been, okay? You look at it, what does it tell us? That because of the level of inflation, we are actually losing out every single month, 19 months in a row. That's unbelievable. You can have a wage increase. You can have your cost of living increases. Social security can go up, but we are still losing every single month. That's incredible. And you add on top of that and directly correlated in the sense because of inflation, we watch the disposable personal income, like the savings rate declining to levels we haven't seen before. People don't have cash anymore. People do not have savings in the bank anymore. People are unable to actually save for an emergency. They don't have that capital anymore. They're using more debt than ever before. That's, that's not a good thing. You see that on this chart right here, the blue line, that's debt. That's credit card debt. Compare that to the savings. Obviously, they're going to be like this. Now, we do have some positives here, and I wanted to note them. That is the black line, oil, as well as natural gas. That's the blue line. And this has been showing us that, you know, ever since we had the whole battle between Ukraine and Russia, well, the prices have come down. We saw the extremes, and that was putting heavy pressure on a lot of people, but these prices have come down. Depends on where you are but um, they've come down. That, that's good news because that means that the, the saver, that means that the average middle class individual uh, is not going to feel as much of a burden because prices have declined. Now, you know, the price you pay at your actual home, different story than the raw commodities, but it's, it's a positive move. We need to see that. Now, if you were watching this channel, you're just aware of what's been going on uh, with bonds, there was negative yielding bonds. In fact, I believe at the absolute peak, it was somewhere around 17, 18 trillion dollars of negative yielding bonds. And you might be asking yourself, what's a negative yielding bond? Like that sounds weird. Well, imagine you take your money and you put it somewhere for 30 years. And the guarantee is that if this country remains solvent, okay, <laughs> don't go bankrupt, you will get less money back. Now, isn't that a great deal? Would you like to buy some negative yielding GPS bonds? How would you like that? I guarantee you less money on the way out. Um, hey, let's try it out. 
Let me know in the comments below. Would you do that? Well, a lot of people did do that. And the fact remains is that now they're basically non-existent again because of what's happening with higher interest rates. So that's important. That's key to understand. Then we move into the housing market. Homes linger on the market as buyers take their time. They know that this is now a buyer's market. Sellers do not have the advantages of what they did before. This is, you know, a direct correlation with mortgage rates, interest rates, looking at it throughout the time. And yes, typically holiday season, slow period, we get that. But it's been a little while and you got mortgage rates that are high. People can't afford it. The debt is just too expensive. They're simply waiting. And I don't blame them. I'm not saying that I, you know, we blame them in this case, but that's what's going on. And inventories have been climbing in many areas. You see anecdotal evidence like this. Economy has drinkers choosing Prosecco over champagne. And that's something I, I think it's a trend as well, too. Uh, but this is what happens. People choose cheaper alternatives. It's not because of Prosecco. It's not because of champagne. It's just everywhere. People are buying the no name brand versus buying a name because they figure, hey, I'll save a little bit of money. Why not? I'll go shop at the cheaper store. I'm not going to go to the fancy markets. And these things are happening all over the place. And that contributes to a slowdown in the economy, less money. When we measure it as like GDP, we see that as a slowdown. Where do you think the GDP was coming from? Do you think that was all fine and dandy stuff? No, people were paying more for the same stuff they had before. British consumers opt for nights in after utility bills soar 33%. This is what I've told you over and over since 2020, and actually much before that. Think about it. You look at it, people, have to pay more for their bills, for their food, their, their house. Obviously, you see, the, you see this. They're not going to go out. Economy slows down. This is how a recession happens. How San Francisco can tackle two of its biggest issues, office vacancies and housing. They made the claims in here. I'm just showing you that they have these two issues. And while they believe that they can rezone high rises and so on, I just think people are more likely to move out then move in. That's important as well. Okay. You got to look at, at it realistically, be honest with yourself. Are, are these places conducive, um, you know, to what you desire and you know, whether that's you moving there or living there, or maybe as an investor, auto loan interest rates are skyrocketing. No one told credit unions, credit unions charge average interest rate of 5.94% for used cars in the third quarter, well below the banks, 8.36%. Now, perhaps um, they'll regret that later. Maybe they're taking on a little bit more risk right now. You know, they, they make uh, their claims in this Wall Street Journal article. I'm just showing you the fact that there's a lot of volatility happening within the financial industry. And one of the things I wanted to point out was that because of this volatility, you could see this is about Canadians, but it's it's everywhere. Canadians turn to cash as a hedge against chaos. A Bank of Canada report suggests cash has become something to hoard rather than spend. So even though inflation is there, you know that's eating away at you. A lot of people are simply saying, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Therefore, I'm simply going to wait. But what is the effect of inflation and everything we are seeing today? Let me break that down for you. Inflation is felt as a sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. When prices rise, the purchasing power of money decreases, which means that the same amount of money can buy fewer goods and services. This can be particularly concerning for savers as their money may not be able to buy as much in the future as it can today. Inflation can also have an impact on retirement accounts as many retirement plans are based on the assumption that prices will remain relatively stable over time. If prices rise significantly, the value of the retirement account may not be able to keep up pace, leading to a decline in purchasing power. This can be concerning for people who are planning to retire soon and rely on the retirement account as a source of income, as a lower balance may not be able to provide the same level of financial 
support. One historical example of the impact of inflation on savers and retirement accounts is the period of high inflation in the 1970s. During this time, the rate of inflation in the United States was much higher than it had been in previous decades, reaching a peak of more than 13% in 1979. This had a significant impact on savers as the value of their money declined over time and it also had an impact on retirement accounts as the purchasing power of these accounts declined as well. You have to focus on where you have investments today. Look out for this and pay attention closely because you're gonna see a lot of talk about China in the new year. China factory activity worsens in December as there was more concern about lockdowns, people staying home. Of course, a lot of people are, are not well right now uh, based on my indicators and uh, um, you know information that I'm receiving directly. And that basically makes people stay home. If they're staying home, they're not spending as much money. So the factory activity has declined. A lot less workers are working and they're producing less stuff. That means less stuff to be shipped over before the new year, okay? This is important as well. You look at China's apocalyptic ghost cities where 65 million homes lay deserted as the Communist Party faces economic chaos. We've heard about the ghost towns before. Some of those were getting filled up, but you still have 65 million empty homes and a lot less building taking place than was uh, prior. So this is quite interesting when I see this. This is not the only article. You could see this a lot, in fact. But I'm, I watch this all the time. You know, you, you can only have so many empty homes. I, I get like you got to be ahead, but if you're too far ahead, at some point, it just doesn't make sense financially. And I believe that's the concern that uh, is being felt right now. The real estate market is a really big risk in China at this time. This was interesting when you see it from a different angle from the geopolitical, uh, when the BRICS nations are absolutely shaking hands um, take a look. First Brazilian corn shipment is heading to China this week. That's key because, you know, soybeans, obviously a big thing between Brazil and China, even when the tariff war was taking place. I don't know if you're aware of this. If you're on the channel uh, during the time you would have known during the tariff war, I was bringing the information to you that despite China's commitment or promise that they were going to buy so many soybeans, in fact, what I saw was they were going to Brazil and signing new contracts and making that happen. And so I was showing the ships uh, going more and more and more towards China carrying soybeans. So it is important to see what they're doing on this level that doesn't get talked about enough. This is related to China's um, uh, digital currency. And I believe if it was uh, a former central banker actually from China, saying that it's not really uh, looking good. Essentially, that's what the article talks about. If you want to, you can check it out. Links are in the description. And if you do appreciate that, and how I always show my sources, please hit that subscribe button down below. Really important to do that, okay? Merck rallies to the best year since 1995 on strong sales and drug data. You can see that if there is a need for more of these pharmaceuticals, that in fact, these will be the companies that can outperform much of the market. Because why? Why? Just like you see with um, green energy, just like you see with, um, you know, even a nuclear or uranium, they can defy what happens generally in the market because billions and when you look at it on a more broad scale trillions of dollars are being spent in these industries if you want to know what happens and you stay to the end of this video you have to research what's going on and of course i'll bring that to you on the channel what's going on from a higher level from the government what are they spending the money on because that will defy gravity even if it's you know generally being pulled down it's important it's really key that's where you want to save. You want to save in that which is really showing us the opposite from what we're seeing with the rest. You don't want to go with the trend. You want to have the intelligence to be able to see this information and bring the best you can to your portfolio, your retirement, your savings. You got to be smart with it. 2023 is a wild one. I'll give you all the details 
hit subscribe below and every single day I'm going to bring you the latest and greatest. See you tomorrow.